What? Another Mailbag Monday? So soon? Yes, because it's a long weekend here in Canada. Happy Thanksgiving. Now, the Americans are going to be confused because their hunters back in history weren't able to catch their turkey for like another month. So they're, they're Thanksgiving's then. But here in Canada right now, it is Thanksgiving. So I'm going to celebrate by doing a bonus Mailbag Monday. And enjoying this fine local stout from Torque Brewing Diesel Fitter Stout. It is very nice. I've had it before. Roasty, malty, dark, and spectacular. The only thing that I would prefer is if the IBU is a hair lower, but the rest of the taste profile is good enough that I am happy to ignore that. It's a good one. I've had it before. You've seen me doing it. Let us start with this one. Protection product. Mm. How come I never pull the right knife out of back there? What do you suppose protection product is? I can think of one thing, but I wouldn't be buying that from China. Oh, it's these little coaxial power adapter things as seen over here and in a bunch of other places um so what have we got here three four five six seven eight nine it's like ten pairs um these are uh, what are they i think 5.2 millimeters it's fairly standard it shows up on the arduinos and um, a lot of power bricks use them um, they are also used for security cameras. That's not why I'm using them. But basically, it just goes from two screw terminals down to either male or female of those. Really handy. I was running out of them, so I got more. New 8 pairs DC 12 volt 6 volt power plug adapter connector for CCTV slash IP camera slash LED. 8 pairs, it says... I just did a recount. I actually got nine pairs in that package. So how often do you get an error in your favor? I got these from Integrity Supplier 2016. Cool. Uh, $2.55 for all of these. Next in is a welding tool. Oh, -ho. what do we got here? Oh, it's a very well packaged. Oh, yeah. I have been waiting for this guy for a long time. This is a soldering iron temperature tester kind of thing. Um, I was hoping that I would have this in time for when I, like months ago, when I did my speed tests of my various uh, soldering irons. So I could also see just sort of what temperature they got up to. But now that I've got it, oh, nice fetching matching colors. Oh, this one is uh, do, Donio, Duino, something like that. Same non-brand brand as this guy, actually. So what do we need on the back here? We need a battery. Nine volt, it says. <gasps> what? With battery included? How often does that happen? I'm sure it's a really high quality battery. Get back on there. It works. Okay. So, dare I consult the manual? There is actually English in this manual. Okay. So the sensors go on there. Yada, yada, whatever. Uh, the sensors are available as replacement parts, but it came with a package of, what, half a dozen or so? Um, okay, so it can measure 0 to 700 Celsius or 32 to 1300 in those fornicate uh, units or whatever they are. Uh, it is a K-type thermocouple. Its accuracy is plus or minus 3 degrees between 300 and 600 and plus or minus 5 degrees outside that range. Okay, uh, 
What else do we need to know? Nothing. Let's toss one of these thermocouples in and test it against this thing and just see if its temperature settings are what it says it is. Now, realistically, I'm more of a soldering by braille kind of a guy. Oh, if I, I have enough experience with it over the decades that if I can see the solder's not reacting the way I like, I'll just adjust the temperature. And really, for years and years and years and years, I didn't have a temperature controlled iron, so I just adjusted my technique to accommodate. Now then, these little thermocouple module unit things, they've got a red and a blue and a non-tagged uh, lead. And on here, there's a red and a blue and a non-tagged dot. So we'll hook that onto there and hook that onto there. And hook, oh. That's interesting. It's supposed to just be held with the spring tension of this little thingy here. But it taint. Okay. I wonder if it's just an anomaly in that one. Let's drop the rest of these guys out of here. I don't know why I closed the bag up. Are these all the same? Hmm. So it's not going to be making excellent electrical connections in there with those things like that. Huh. I'll have to think about this for a second. So while I'm figuring this thing out, I guess I should just check the listing. I got it from Banggood. I don't order from them that often, but uh, when the price is right, why not? Uh, this particular one cost me $15.90 which is a little higher than I tend to pay for stuff, but this is the best deal I could find on it. Um, it, it took less than a month to get here, actually. It's just been chilling out in my, uh, in my inbox for a while for me to get to it. I guess I gotta grind through my inbox a little bit more often, shouldn't I? Anyway, uh, Denu FG100 soldering iron tip thermometer temperature tester, zero to 700 degrees Celsius. And free shipping. Looks like most of the information in here is also in the uh, in the manual. This chart is straight out of the manual, so is that. Um, package includes one tip thermometer, one 9-volt battery, and five lead-free sensor set. Um, I don't do lead-free around here, but I don't think that matters, because leaded solder has a little bit more sensible melting temperature. Okay, after I took a look at the listing, I spent a little bit of time... Uh, looking more closely at these thermocouples and what's going on here is basically there the thermocouple consists of the join between the the two dissimilar metals in there as far as I can tell and then two wires coming uh, going through one going to each side of the I guess the dissimilar metal join and then the two wires continue on through and up and get twisted and connect to there. Now then, this I think is just a mechanical uh, anchor. And these two are the actual conductors that uh, sense the voltage uh, uh, generated in the thermocouple. So, to that end, I undid the little loop on the anchor side. Um at the top there and shortened it up a little bit so that now there is some spring tension in there so hopefully this guy will work now so the LED is starting to flash over there which means it's up to temperature I'll just give it a cleaning some fresh solder on the tip now this is still that fairly large chisel tip um, so power on so that guy is blinking on and off when it's off it's not heating I will put that on there. Can you read that? Let that come up to temperature. So that seems to be 
about 320, so my calibration is way off. 321, 322. How long do I need to hold it on there for? Seven, twenty-eight. It's still climbing. There's some heat transfer. Three thirty. But that's still well shy of seven, uh, four hundred. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder how my other irons do. Now that's not concerning because again. The setting that I've got it at is a setting that I'm comfortable soldering at, right? So it's not a big hairy deal. Where's my USB iron? There's the USB iron. And it, if we, as we recall, heats up very quickly. I'm going to, no, I'm going to use my USB power bar off to the side here. I'll use my power supply over here. It's... It's set up for USB, or it can be very quickly. And it's already set for 5 volts from a previous experiment. Uh, so power him on. And it's drawing just shy of an amp. So let that get heated up. There we go, it's hot already. A little bit of solder on there. Ouch. Put that on there. So 320, I'm thinking the target should be around 350 for good good soldering with leaded solder um that's just a number that i've heard again i've never until very recently had anything that will show me the temperature or that is temperature controlled that you can adjust it so it hasn't really concerned me but this is more of a curiosity thing and for what was it 15 bucks or something like that i can live with that i'm gonna call that 360 something which is okay so it's uh, right in the range of where I just happened to end up with my temperature controlled iron set. And again, ow, that was hot. I wasn't, wa when I was setting this thing up, I wasn't watching the dial. I was just watching how it reacted. And once you've got some experience soldering, that's generally what you tend to do anyway, unless you're working with some new material and then you want a starting point. Oh, well, that's, that's interesting. And... If I have to replace the iron handle or tips or something like that, that'll be good to just have a sanity check if something's not working properly. Okay, next in we have light bulb and also light bulb. That doesn't look like a light bulb. It certainly doesn't look like two of them. Rampo, Rampo lighting warranty card. Right. Getting warranty from somebody in China. So what do we have here? So a little power supply module and is this electroluminescent wire? I think it is. I remember ordering some of that some time ago. Okay, let's uh more things to play with. That's awesome. And, but actually, before, there's no absolutely no markings on there, so I don't know what voltage it wants in. And obviously that connects to there. If I remember correctly, this stuff takes a moderately high voltage to actually get it to, uh, get it to be bright and, um, and interesting. So I think I'll go off to the listing, see if it tells us what uh, what voltage I need to put into this thing, and then we'll come back and play. Okay, I couldn't find the listing where I bought it, but this is the same seller, and this is the same product. He's currently got an auction going on. It is one by three foot red EL wire neon LED glow strip string rope tube plus 12 volt controller. There is the most important thing that I was looking for. 
So it is electroluminescent wire. It is not neon. It is not LED. I guess you could kind of call it string. Uh, Renpo Technology K. I paid 76 cents and I got this at auction. Um, as I said, he's currently got this on auction now. Um, or actually, by the time you watch this auction, it'll be over too. But I'll put the link in anyway. That'll give you the search terms and the seller and and you can go from there. Um, there are other sellers selling this stuff, of course. So, color red, length 3.28 feet, 1 meter. Uh, flexible and water resistant, can be bent into shapes and cut to length. 360 degrees of illumination. Long life, 12,000 hours. I've heard that this stuff does dim over time. Um, but... It is 12 volt controlled, so 12 volts into the little magic box and whatever out. Can be powered by 12 volt cigarette lighter output. Hmm, automotive use. Or you could tie it around the spokes of your bike tires or your wrists or even your pet's collar for extra protection in the evening. Hmm. Okay, 12 volts it says. Well, we can definitely accommodate that. There's 12.01. So, uh, red wire to the red, we go connector, black wire to the black one, and that's plugged in there and on. Does anything happen? Oh yeah, in the dark under the desk I can see it happening. Um, well, let's turn it on again and go to so it's drawing 2930 milliamps which is almost nothing and 11.99 let me turn off the big light here now can you see it I'll turn it off and on that's fairly subtle isn't it I'll bring it right up here I guess in a purely dark room, it would be good, or outside in the dark. Hmm. It's not quite as spectacular as I had hoped. But, for, what did I pay, 76 cents? That's not a bad little experimental toy. The other thing, let's just see what kind of voltage is coming out of that thing. Optimistically, well, 200 volts AC is the lowest range that this meter's got. And on. 180 volts AC. Wow. But again, 30 milliamps on the 12 volt side. You crank up the voltage by, let's say, an order of, it's more than 10 times. Well, let's call it 10 times just for easy math. So voltage goes up, watts stay the same, amperage goes down. So this will be less than 3 milliamps there. I don't want to touch it, but it probably wouldn't cause me damage. Okay. That could be fun, and Halloween's only a few weeks away, isn't it? Hmm. What else we got in the bag of tricks here? Laser pointer. Could I have... I have really ordered a laser pointer from China. I did. I did order a laser pointer from China. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this thing. Somebody asked in the comments, how come I always do that? Pop my blade off the, uh, off the bench. Well, the simple answer is when I pick it up by the handle, that's not a very ergonomic position, and I don't really want to go and grab it by the sharp point, so I just do that to shove my hand back down. Now you know the rest of the story. So, hole in that end, pushy button there, screw cap on this end. What would fit in there? Triple A battery. Uh, one of them. Two of them. Okay. See what happens. Nothing. Right. Okay. 
there we go got it so uh, the anchor malfunction was that this thing 99% of all flashlight batteries that I've ever seen go in positive first not this thing it goes in negative first and here we go a dot a laser dot not a very focused dot and with all this light here it's bright enough to see so can I see it across the room oh yeah that's bright enough to see across the room hmm now then why would I want a laser pointer why wouldn't you want a laser pointer but you could also use it as a, I will it reflect off things sure it will look at that I'm bouncing it off that USB shell so if this thing was cheap enough and I assume it was I could uh, use it for position detection I could shine it across something a doorway or a railroad track or whatever and put a photo cell or, or photo diode or photo transistor on the other side and when something gets in the way it will cause a change of state and if that's if that's my use case if that ends up being my use case I could chop that off and just solder on three volts rather than running it off batteries huh let's check the listing see how much I really did pay for that Ideal, glorious 5 milliwatt red laser pointer pen beam light high power laser 650 nanometers from Hot Deal 320. This is the seller I bought it from. I happened to get it from them at auction though. And you're not going to believe this, so I'll show you. I actually paid 38 cents. Their current non-auction price is buck forty-six Canadian, which is still pretty reasonable. It's pretty close to what you'd get a laser pointer that runs on uh, button cells for at a uh, dollar store. So that's that's reasonable, and at the price that I got it for at auction, you just can't go wrong. And item the fifth, the final item, says diodes. That should be fun. I always like that because usually the kind of diodes that I order are LEDs oh come on I'm gonna have to replace the blade on my knife that's not a diode that's not even wow why is that so gunky and don't tell me it's because I've been bouncing it off my my cutting mat that is wire that is four conductor wire the reason they call it LEDs is probably because this tends to be used with RGB LED strips which is why they've got the black common and then uh, R G and B conductors so that according to the tag was five meters of that stuff and that's that's just to have for stock. It's light gauge. It's probably, I'd guess, 20 gauge. We'll see what the listing says. Four pin RGB extension wire cord cable for 35-28 or 50-50 RGB LED strip light wholesale. It's wire. You can use it for anything. Uh, from Tiao Chiang yeah this guy here um, I bought five meters for three dollars and eight cents with free shipping it only took a month to get here which is nice um, but yeah for for most of the summer stuff's been getting here in uh, between three and five weeks some of these things uh, this week took a lot longer than that some took shorter what do we have here it doesn't say There we go it's 22 gauge wire that's lighter than I thought and that's not gonna be super useful for high currents but that's okay I have other wire for high current anyway here is all the stuff from this mailbag the temperature tester for soldering irons 
curious, interesting, maybe fun. I don't know how useful it'll be at the end of the day. Laser pointer. It's a laser. This wire, always handy to have wire in the shop. This electroluminescent thing. It, it'll be fun to play with, and it was cheap enough that even if it's not that useful, it's still a cool little toy to have. And of course, these plugs for stock. One, two, three, yeah, that's everything. Um, well, thank you again for stopping by my shop, seeing what I got in the mail. I appreciate it. And as always, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters who help support my habit, uh, hobby, uh, fun, and ultimately support these, uh, these mailbags. If you like uh, what what you're seeing, feel free to drop over to Patreon and throw a buck in the tip jar. I would appreciate it. The rest of you, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later. Oh, right. Comments and stuff down there. Yeah. Okay. Bye.